One of the things I think is just really important, Brian, for the viewers and listeners to be aware of is that uh, some of these models are saying this could last more than a few weeks. Let's just put it that way. Could it be through the spring season? Could it be through a component of the summer season? You know, in my mind, I'm kind of telling my people that that's very, very possible. And so, um, and, and the shelter in place thing could be going for a while. I get a little nervous when I hear people want to turn the economy back on by sure. April or whatever day, Easter. Sure. You know, that makes me a little uncomfortable. And, and I get why people want well, to do that. To just go back to what we were talking about, I mean, the science points that it's not going to be done in April and Easter. It's magical thinking to think that. I think it's dangerous, and I'm not. It's not about politics. It's about messaging and facts, and the science isn't supporting that. I think Dr. Fauci, who is someone who's I think become very credible, mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. and is credible well before he was in the role he has now today. Mm -hmm. um, these are the voices that should be the loudest in terms of not exasperating because we can turn the economy back on, but if we're right back where we started yeah. by in May 15 versus April, whatever Easter is this year, uh, the, yeah, it's going to be worse. Yeah, so and I, the outcome's going to be worse to the economy, which is everyone else is trying to protect so desperately. So right I, now. I think the message should be that if we do like all these governors have already done and we do that for, I don't know if it's 90 days or if it's 120 days and we tell businesses it's going to really be bad for 90 or 120 days. But if we do this now, we can decrease cluster outbreaks of this stuff kind of cyclically coming in and back. Right. Yeah. Which is, you know, you just got to really tamp it down hard. You got to yeah. hit it hard. And that means we have to be away from each other in business, in restaurants and things like that. It's well, and the hard part is, and I didn't mean to interrupt, but the, I just want to amplify it as that not everybody in the country is in the same point with this infection rate. So New York is one thing we saw governor Cuomo talking, you know, very specifically about, they're in the fight right now. They're they're in it, and it's coming to maybe to West Michigan in a, a week or two in that way. It could be coming to Indianapolis and Chicago. But we're all in a little different timing in terms of how this uh, the symptoms and the and the severe Ill illnesses present themselves. So and the surge is coming. Yeah. So that that's a great that's a great insight. And I'll say that in China, the Hubei province. They really locked down about 110, 120 million people with intensive tracking and things of that nature. They, they imported or exported, China, the rest of China exported about 40,000 medical professionals to that province, mm -hmm. which doubled their medical um, providers in right. that province. I think a similar scenario might play out here in the United States where you have rural, smaller states. I grew up in New Mexico which is quite rural, mm -hmm. and Albuquerque is one of the more densely populated parts of that state, but they may not be as severely impacted by this. They will get some, for sure. Sure. But they, we might, they might ex New Mexico might export their intensivists, their respirators, and the other things to harder-hit yeah. regions. Right? Meaning a real-time demand. Yeah, exactly. So I think we, we will probably see that as this plays out over the weeks and months ahead. This Full Exposure podcast episode has been made possible through the support of Metro Health, University of Michigan Health, and Dr. Peter Hahn, who believe that creativity and the arts are essential to a rich, healthy, and fulfilling life.